So here we have an advertisement of sorts by a company called Bonobos. And they wish to evolve the definition of masculinity for us all. So what we get is a collection of men, all asked to look bewildered and confused at the definition of masculinity. But interestingly, the existing definition of masculine in this advertisement is defined purely by brute strength. Strength, aggressiveness, macho, manly, muscular, well-built, red-blooded, strapping, strong, brawny, powerful. Those are the words used to describe the masculine by this collection of overly groomed hipsters. I say the masculine, what I mean is the wrong masculine according to these fellows. The old masculine which needs changing, which needs reforming, apparently. Now, I've seen some reaction videos to this, and they tend to center on the same sense of masculinity, declaring that the men in this advertisement are weak and feminine, and just generally of a less masculine nature. If anything, that only adds to the confusion, people. Let's have a look at this supposed problem, shall we? Is this the definition of the masculine? So here we have Mr. Schwarzenegger in his prime. If you take the definitions of power and strength and all those other descriptions, then this is the manliest man who ever lived. But is that alone the making of a man? Because if so, we're all useless unless we spend most of our time in the gym. Has manliness now just become about lifting weights and then throwing our weight about on a Friday night to impress the ladies? It appears to me that many of the responses are as confused about masculinity as is this ludicrous advertisement. What is absolutely clear to me is that the concept of masculinity needs about as much reform as does that of oxygen or three-dimensional space. If you have a problem with these things, then it is you who has that problem. If anyone needs to evolve, it is therefore you and no one else. Now take a look at this bust. Does this look like a man to you? Are you left in any doubt? Are you confused? He was not a weightlifter or a bodybuilder. He did not star as Conan the Barbarian. I am sure his biceps will have been puny, but he was undoubtedly a man. A man who became immortal, some might say. And listen to his work. Is there not strength in that? A power of sorts. The power of the mind. Is not being a man about containing that magical essence, that something, the divine spark? And if it is within you, then your height, your shape, your weight, they're irrelevant. Look into the eyes of this person and tell me whether you see a man or not. Is this merely a weed? Or a pussy, as some call folks these days, because he has no great deal of muscle or body mass. Look into the eyes of Abraham Lincoln and tell me you see nothing. Strength, aggressiveness, muscular, strong, powerful, macho. Those were the words used in that advertisement to describe masculinity. Is this man strong, aggressive and muscular? Yet would anyone doubt this being a man? A man is not some lumpen thing whose sole aim it is to be a beast of burden. Of course physical strength is a trait, a male trait, but to think it the dominant male trait is ridiculous. And so it matters not how much weight Richard Burton may have been able to bench press. No one cares. Should you doubt me, then cast your eye upon this person. Is this a man? I think you would agree it is. But is he of any physical significance? I think not. And yet Albert Einstein was a man. So if we are convinced that this is a man, then why should masculinity need evolving in order to make us define men by something other than their thumping their chests and shouting a lot? The truth is, we do not define men that way. We haven't been doing so for a very long time. Why not take a look at this sickly, snooty young fellow? Is this a man? Or is he not aggressive enough, not sufficiently powerfully built to be credible as a man? Now in truth, to look at him, he is somewhat callow here. Yet he lived one of the most extraordinary lives of the late 19th and 20th centuries. He grew in age and stature and became this man. 
one of the most outstanding individuals of the modern age, who could inspire, could instill in people an iron will to persevere against overwhelming odds. Was Winston Churchill a man? I most certainly think so. And this diminutive fellow, would he be too small, too short, too puny? But if I told you that Isambard Kingdom Brunel was the greatest, most daring engineer who ever lived, might that change matters? What of this fellow with those gentle eyes? Surely he could not have added up to much. Well, aside from conquering Arabia, that is. Or this small poindexter of a man with his pen and tiny glasses. What did Rudyard Kipling ever do? Or this man with a pretty face and a handsome voice. Is Elvis Presley manly enough? What about this genteel-looking fellow, small in stature and of no strength at all? Does Charlie Chaplin pass muster? Now, Charlton Heston was a big, powerfully built man. But look at this image, and what do you see of his body? Seeing his face, do you really need to know the circumference of his chest? Or is this a man by any measure, with a steady gaze, the bearing and manner of a man? The truth is that masculinity has long since evolved. We don't need bonobos to help us. These tiresome ideas of toxic masculinity, which feminists cast about, and which clearly have inspired this bonobo's peace, are spread in willful ignorance of the fact that being a man has always been about more than strength. There is a code to it, an intricate set of rules which males in their formative years come to understand, more often than not from their fathers or other male figures in their surroundings. Men are the more stoical sex, dependable, resilient, steadfast. Those are the words with which to describe masculinity. And should you really need a means to justify to yourself your right to be male while not being this sort of physical specimen, then you could always simply be a gentleman. That is all from the Cyber Pass for now. Thank you very much, and goodbye.